Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Time for Lime. <laughs> Can't even remember what the hell I'm going to be doing. Yes, it is the High Road Brewery. We are back once again with the renegade Andy. <laughs> it's Time for Lime and it's a, it's a kind of thing off the need for Citra where I had a base. Let's play with that a little bit change the hops out and so it's a bit of fun and a bit of continuation on the old recipe development so yes 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 anyway as usual let's get to the sexy brew footage and then you can join me for tasting this sexy beer okie doke right anyway catches Yes, she is. Oh, it's kind of, it's right at the end of the keg now, so it's kind of that way you're going, why is this tasting so awesome all of a sudden? Not all of a sudden, I mean, it has been awesome, but like super awesome. And mainly because the keg's about to kick and I thought, crap, I better get this beer reviewed. So it's a time for lime. It's what I wanted to do was on Motowika. I'd had a little bit of Motowika from an overtone beer. So I wanted to try and bring that into the this beer uh, with the citra hops that I had in the previous one just as a as a good base. And then I also wanted to get back into try notes again because it's something I've kind of moved away from because I know it causes a lot of issues with oxidisation and also I've never been a big fan in the past of oats so it was a bit of a let's go back into it and see what it's like again to see if it can bring the body right mm. time for lime so pale ale 4.5% <coughs> and it's, yeah, it was using sandals as well, so I think I swapped out, no, I didn't swap out, and I've upped the pale wheat, eh, uh, pale, the white wheat. I've upped the white wheat, added in flaked oats, and I've went for pops instead of my usual golden promise. Although, I think I've used pops in the Need for Citra as well, so not an issue. Yes. Anyway, beer. See on the nose, I'm actually getting proper sherbet. Like that kind of sherbet -y, sweet sort of sherbet smell. I'm guessing that's probably the citra that will give that sort of... sort of thing going on. But, yeah. Colour-wise, it is opaque as folk. It's pretty damn, yeah, what you would expect from using a kilo of white wheat and, what was it, 380 grams of flaked oats? Anyway, let's go in. Oh. 
So initially you're getting a nice kind of sharp bitterness. It's not like crazy or anything. It's kind of nicely balanced, but it's it's of a higher level um, compared to your kind of really, really soft beers at the minute. Soft pale juice. It's got a nice douse of bitterness, which means that you always want to try and go back for more. It's quite a nice sessionable beer sort of thing where yeah it doesn't leave it leaving too soft or anything like that it does have a nice kind of zing but you do get that that kind of lime limey sort of New Zealand thing on the top of your tongue with douse of bitterness and some citra on there So it's kind of, it's more like a kind of tongue twister. It definitely has your tongue kind of going. You would call, you know, anyone that drank this would be like, oh, that's a really hoppy beer. It does have a nice, it is still quite, I wouldn't say it's a, a full body or anything like that. I think that's just part and parcel of the low ABV beers, you know. When you're going to the four and a halfs, you can't get the same mouthfeel that you get from a 7% Nipah. So, for this kind of light beer, it does have a thicker body, if you know what I mean. So, it still has a, it still feels thin, but not thin. It's it's definitely a lot thicker than the, the Need for Citra was. But yeah. It just keeps changing as well, like you get a lot, as you go through it, like I'm getting a lot kind of zesty lemon citrus on the tongue now. Uh, but the body is just, a, the body for low ABV is good, I must say. I, I'm, yeah, I'm a, it wouldn't be fair to say it's very light because I think these beers tend to do be quite light, uh, the low ABV anyway. Oh. Now, was this was this an improvement over the need for Citra? I don't know because that beer, Citra on its own, it was more about the kind of juice, the more, but this it is juice, but this is what I'm saying is it's got those kind of more citrus, like lemon a lime sort of pulls on the tongue and with that the bitterness as well it's not a mega bitterness it's like it's well balanced but just compared to that I think the the need for citra was more of a just a juice bomb is basically the way to go it was more kind of it didn't have that sharp sort of flavors which I mean this beer is still really really good it's just not thingy on that so the citra is the Citra Smash or Citra Single Hop is pretty freaking awesome, I would say. It's maybe about trying to find its perfect partner. You would say Mosaic, but there's other hops. I mean, the game is to try and find other ones. So, the yeah, I will, I will try something again. I do already have a, a future, obviously this... This is uh, the, the joys of being here in the future. I have just kegged another beer with just pure uh, Equinot and tried a different kind of base moving away maybe from this base. Um, but that'll be a future video, so tune in for that. Now, this, it does smell, it smells awesome. I think the Citra is an awesome hop. Motoika is again another awesome hop. I wonder what it would be like, Motoika would be like on its own. I know, uh, speaking with Chris uh, Millington, Chris says you need to throw a lot of Motoika at a beer. And I'd probably agree to get it to really, really shine. Uh, this, I think, has how much Motoika? 60 grams in the Whirlpool and 60 grams in the Dry Hop. And then we've got 5 grams of Citra at 60. Uh, so there was two 
there was a 60 gram charger Citra and a 60 gram charger Moto E cat at the Whirlpool. 20 minutes, 80 degrees. And then the dry hop was 60, de- uh, 60, 60 grams of Citra and 60 grams of Moto Eka. But I think you need to, you would need to, if you really wanted the Moto Eka to shine through, you would need to up, up it. But then it depends what you want to be the, the shining hop as well. I think Citra is such a great body hop to build with other other hops. So, no, I mean, it's a really nice singy pail that has went pretty rapid. The I've used, I've got the Fermenter King Junior I'm using, so that's the plastic keg. So I can actually literally see how much beer is left in that. I don't know if I've shown that in any of my previous videos, but it's just like the, all these kind of, pressure fermenter things but it's in a 20 litre size I believe it's got the kind of same dimensions as a kind of short fat uh, corny kegs but it's fat and maybe slightly taller I don't know but it, it fits in in this the the white f- uh, fridge anyway so it's all good and it's pretty cool that you can see the only downsides I would say with the fermenter king junior is it's only rated for two years Whereas your corny kegs will obviously be rated for much longer. But I managed to pick it up in a sale. I think for about 40 odd quid. So I just thought, oh, bargain. And it is pretty cool where you can see... You can see how much beer you've got left. Which is one of the problems we have. Because it just tends to come out of the blue. And that seems to be happening a few of my kegs actually. I've moved my... I did have a kind of small kegerator the two tap one that i started off with in the conservatory i've now moved it into the drinking den in here because a lot of drinking now happens in here and not very much in there so drinking in the house will probably be cans and all that sort of stuff whereas in here it's uh, more new babies <sighs> but yeah no it, it's this is a good beer must say, I used the Sanders yeast again. I'm starting to really enjoy that one. I think it was a wee bit touch and go uh, with it. I think when it doesn't flocculate out fully, sometimes it can be quite... I find it can give a rubbery thing with the, the yeast flavour, which is like, oh, that's not good because that means it's poor fermentation or whatever. Uh, the, the yeast are exploding and all that sort of thing uh, that you can get. But it's not. It, it flocks out and then... I've done a few of the, these and I've not had the issue and I fermented it in 19 uh, kind of right through the fermentation and then at the end upping it to 21 which I'll have done with this dry hopping 12 degrees that sort of thing uh, the, the all the usual standards and then using the I've got the carb cap on the Chronicle so I can get 2.5 PSI max boost on it for a uh, cold crashing which is good keeps out the O2 and it definitely, when it, sometimes when it over uh, crushes, not crushes, but when it sucks in and it's negative pressure inside, then it's, you can definitely tell, if, if you were to accidentally like pull the PRV or anything like that, it would suck in the air. So you always have to be careful and always put like uh, gas on. I just top it up and then knock it back up to max boost two and a half PSI. So yes. I'll finish up here and next video is going to be an IPA for Dell's birthday. That was epic and I took that round and got all that filmed as well. So that'll be another video coming up. That's a, that's a banger. <laughs> I think it ended up 7.9%. So there was a, a lot of drunkenness afterwards, I think. Would be, yeah, proper on the bevies. So anyway, cheers guys for listening. Subscribe to the channel. Let's try and get this channel to a thousand subs. Eh? And I'll catch you later. Cheers. Boom, 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 boom. I want you in my room. Gonna make in love forever. From now until forever. Boom, 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 boom. Is she hitting us?